Gene from Math Star Observatory. Um, as you can see, it's very early hours over here in the UK. Uh, the sun is just coming up over there on the horizon, as you can see. Um, obviously, today is the 17th of the month, and you know what that means. We pull out the SD cards of the TriMag and the magnetosphere sensor, and uh, you know, we talk a little bit about that. Um, so I just want to say a uh, big thanks to the people that have been supporting the observatory. It's real difficult times at the moment for a lot of us and for those people that are still standing by, you know, the lines and supporting us is just amazing at this at this point in time. So, you know, kudos to you guys. And I, I just want to just say this. You see this field that we're looking at here yesterday, I've seen some really unusual. Just I know it's a little bit off the beaten track, but we are going to get into some data, so just bear with me. But I've seen something really unusual yesterday here. A fox attacked a cat. It, it chased it over the field, and I was like lucky enough to be there at the time it did it. And it grabbed the cat and, and shook it terribly. I thought... You know, it was going to kill it there and then, but the cat managed to get away. And you know what cats are like? There they are, scratchers and biters and hissers. And it managed to get away and bolted over that little fence there that you can see in the garden, just there, and got away. And, you know, I know these cats go into this field. I watch them, you know, regularly go into this field. And I see them regularly jumping back over that little fence with a mouse in the mouth. So they're hunting and they're being hunted and for a fox you know to see a fox attack a cat was just unreal but it got away and I bet you that cat never goes back in that field again to hunt another mouse <laughs> it was just amazing but you know there's a, there's a little bit of a note before we get into the details of the pole shift guys um, some of you uh, obviously will know what I'm talking about uh, if I mention the number 144 or if we've had uh, a brief discussion about things that resonate with us. I want to just say right now, guys, uh, you may not understand what I'm talking about, but what we was uh, sort of like discussing on, you know, uh, a brief note about things that resonate with us, I just want to say that they're more real than what you know. That's all I want to say. And, you know, how can I put this into some... Okay, I, I know that there's some people out there in our world that we live with are real gentle beings, human beings, and you can just tell by listening to them for a few minutes that they're really gentle and, you know, innocent, and, you know, they, they've got no idea of the things that can take place in our world. I mean, some really ugly things take place on our earth, and you know that, guys. Uh, the sun's really starting to come above the tree line over there now. But I just want to say this. With regards to those things that resonate with each other, yeah, they're real. And they're more real than what you can even imagine. And, you know, what I just want to say is, is don't try and push at this moment. You know, I've... I've got something uh, behind me that follows me, helps me, trusts me, does help me. I'll just say this now. There's no way I could have ever written the code for the Trimax system uh, without some form of help. You've got to realise that. right? I'm, I'm good, but I'm not that good. I could never have come up with a universal equation uh, one morning and you know shared that with you guys. And there is something else out there. That's all I want to say. There's something else out there. And it is like a guardian to us. It watches over us. It helps us. You know, you, and all you've got to do is shine a little bit brighter in your life. And you will attract it if you haven't already. You may well have already have drew this to you or these things to you. Right, so just bear that in mind. And for the the weaker people, you know, the innocent people out there, you know, we look at this universe and um, all I can say is there's nothing wicked 
in the universe at all. You know, wicked things happen on this planet uh, every day. You know, there are mean people out there, and you know that. But there's nothing mean when you leave the atmosphere of this Earth and you go out to the, into the solar system and you go out beyond the solar system and even beyond the galaxy. You know, there's nothing evil about anything that is taking place. You know, suns, supernovae, and it's the natural thing. It's part of nature. That is the nature of a sun, eventually, to supernovae. And I know we call it the solar constant, our sun, that we're looking at right now, rise above the horizon. But it's not constant. It won't last forever. It has got a sell-by date, which will expire at one point. And hopefully by that point, we'll have reached a technological advancement, hopefully with the help of some other things at the right point in time. And, you know, we will leave this solar system and move on to another one. And, you know, for some races of beings out there, that's been the norm for many, 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 many eons of years, if you like. But there's an important thing I want to just you know, bring to those people that probably feel vulnerable and all that, you know, bringing it back down to just the simplicities of things, yeah, nothing goes to waste in this universe, you know, absolutely nothing, it's a giant recycling thing, when suns supernovae, they explode, yeah, with a great force, it's, it, to some people it's really violent and exotic and you know, catastrophic, but it's part of the nature of the universe in which we live. And we're very fortunate to be able to be close enough to a sun where it provides life on Earth for many things. But it's not going to last forever. And I'm not saying it's going to end in our lifetimes, but it's not going to last forever. But the, the main point is, is that after the supernovae, you know, the catastrophic explosion of the sun, um, you know, that very simple thing, gravity, starts to work again. It never ends, and it pulls all the interstellar gas back into small objects which become big objects, and they, in turn, have a large gravity, and they attract more things, and there's more collisions, and you've probably seen some videos how things put back together from interstellar gas. You know, we are now um, privileged to have the Hubble telescope show us how, you know, interstellar gas, you know, works and creates more solar systems, and it all begins again. It's a reincarnation of, you know, a solar system and many solar systems and solar systems that can support life on planets like our own. So, you know, what I wanted to say to those people that are in some form of doubt of what are we doing here? What's it all about? You know, I just want to say there's, there's a great plan and, you know, there is such a thing called fate and fate is part of that plan and we're all part of that plan. And what's taking place right now is not a diversion from the plan. It is meant to happen. And it's all about, you know, realising that and being at peace with it. You know, we live in a hostile environment. If you want to look at it as, as that, you know, there are many hostile things that can happen to even our Earth. We can have a meteorite hit it and destroy the Earth. You know, there are things that travel faster than we can even imagine out in our universe. And it's only by the grace of God, really, that they don't hit our planet. You know, we really have been given uh, a fair crack of the whip on this planet, and we've reached the point of where we are right now. But it doesn't mean that things are going to last forever. You've got to remember that. But what you have to remember, I think, is... The important thing is that nothing will ever go to waste. A lifetime could be for some people, uh, you know, 35 years and it comes to an end. It could be 85 years and it comes to an end. But I think you'll agree with me in the simplistic terms that a lifetime is simply a lifetime. No matter how long it lasts, 
time is only relevant to you know that person at that time and it will be a lifetime regardless so I know it's been a bit of a deviation from the norm and I'm sure you um, all look for you know the topic of uh, pole shift which I was thinking about calling it something else something a little bit more glamorous like you know because pole shift is being used very widely. I, I don't know what your th thoughts are on this, but you know, I think we should give it a code name or something like uh, Viper uh, Anomaly or Viper One Anomaly or something like that. I don't know. You give me your thoughts down there. What should we code name uh, pole shift? So you know that we know what it is. Obviously, it's pole shift, but we need to give it a little bit more of a facelift. I think um, to try and draw in more people get them aware of what's going on in their world with regards to the poles reversing and uh, yeah just give me your thoughts on that in the comment section okay guys so we're going to crack on now with um, the information uh, that we usually send out on the 17th and uh, let's get on with it let's say no more Okay, so let's get straight into the data. Uh, where is the magnetic north pole? Okay, well as you can see, uh, we're at 83 degrees by 46 days, 48 hours, 96 uh, minutes north by 126 degrees by 41 days, 19 hours and 17 minutes east. <laughs> Um, it's moved just short of three and a half miles, so a little less progression uh, again for the second month on the run. But when we zoom out, guys, we'll see it is still on its way tracking um, towards Siberia and that almost closer to the 40 degree mark, as we'll see as we zoom out right here. Let's just get rid of that and carry on zooming out and here comes the 40 degree mark and we can see uh, how it is tracking easterly towards Siberia. So nothing has changed in the direction, not much has changed in the speed, it is still heading towards Siberia and that's the coordinates if you're following it um, and pinning it on your own Google Earth as the months go by. So uh, let's have a look then at the TriMag and Magnetosphere data. And we're over here at Pole Shift News and we're just looking at the TriMag data over the last month. We can see there's a little bit of a V early on in the recordings of the data, uh, but pretty much the same as last month. Uh, we're bumping 13 degrees a lot, which is an indication that we are still tracking easterly, as we already know, uh, towards Siberia at a steady rate. Uh, let's go and have a look at the magnetosphere data. And on the magnetosphere data, if I just pull down the chart so we can have a look at this uh, recent month's worth of readings, we can see that it's starting to climb back up towards the 200 uh, microteslas. And I'll tell you what's significant about that. If we go back to this time last year and have a look where the magnetosphere readings was, what we'll see is around about that time, so we're on the 17th of the 3rd to the 4th, so let's have a look, 17th of the 3rd, there we go. So if, here we are, we can see that it did creep up uh, a year, around a year ago at the same time uh, to the 200. But if we go uh, a bit further back from there, we'll see that it was uh, below 200. So I'm just wondering whether you know there is something significant about planetary alignment maybe if a few of you have got the time to invest and you want to look into that at this point in time of the year we might be aligning up with certain planets and that could affect our magnetosphere strength just putting that out there guys like i say if you've got the time perhaps go over to jpl you know send back the date to uh the 17th of 2019 uh, 2019, you know, or around about the 14th of the 3rd, 2019, uh, to the 17th of the 4th, 2019, then compare it with 2020. Um, just see what planets have aligned up there and see if there's anything, in, you know, anything significant. Now, I do know that, uh, you know, planets, uh, the further out we go 
you know, they're all on uh, different um, orbitable patterns. But I'm just wondering if there's something, um, you know, in there. It might be worth your time investing in having a look in here. JPL is an easy program to use and it's good to set, you know, it's easy to send back the date to that point in time. Um, just wondering why at this time last year, you know, we was at, uh, a, you know, a little incline in the magnetosphere reading. It could be just, you know, uh, our orientation at this point of year in our solar system. You know, we might be aligning up with something in the galaxy. We just don't know. It's just, you know, just putting that out there. Maybe if you've got a bit of extra time to invest in that and, uh, you know, just give me give me what you come up with. You know, let's let's hear what you've got to say on the matter or what your findings are. You know, this is a joint effort at the end of the day. Uh, you know, if you want to use the data that we put up on the website to come up with your own conclusions and bring it to our attention, do so. That's what it's all about, guys. Remember, there is only one of me here. And with everything else that I'm doing here at the observatory, you know, time is getting thinner and thinner the more we do. Uh, so, yeah, just putting that out there. So, guys, to finish off, atmospheric oxygen is at still over 21%. Uh, we've got CO2 parts per million at 427, which is strange because, you know, if uh, we're listening to the news, 90% of crude oil has stopped being sold or is not being sold. And therefore, that tells us that, you know, 90% of the fuel is not being burnt. So, you know, the CO2 should have come down if mankind is responsible for it. But as you know, as well as I know, that it's not, you know, CO2 is just a stealth tax. That's pretty much what they've uh, come up with in order to tax, you know, the world, its money, uh, as they do. Uh, the muon count is slightly down by 30 on the hour per square metre per hour. Uh, the reading this morning was at 531 muons per hour per square metre. Uh, which is still a lot, but just slightly less than what we last uh, recorded. If you remember, it was at 560. Um, I'm going to dedicate a web page uh, to monitor the muons weekly, so I can put up the data there, and you can see how the electron, uh, sorry, the um, you know the cosmic radiation uh, changes from week to week. So you know, like I say, there's a lot going on, guys, here at the observatory. Uh, we are still looking hungrily for someone to have one of our muon detectors in um, Brazil so if you know someone in Brazil who is reliable has a computer uh, maybe we can rig up a you know a, a battery backup supply for uh, the muon just in case there is power cuts because I know in some of these countries that like India there, there are power cuts frequently so we can probably can continue to keep our data coming in uh, even though there is a power cut for at least 24 hours you know so yeah if you know someone in brazil that will take one of our muon detectors and a magnetometer uh, please ask them and if you're in brazil yourself you know get in touch with me leave a comment down there in the section uh, in the comment section I'll, I'll get uh, in touch with you and we'll link up on skype or something like that um i'm probably uh, because we're not really um getting anywhere with australia in south central so i'm probably inclined to as perth does lie down quite subtly on the uh, continent i'm probably going to send that out to um uh, jeff one of our superstars who's already got one of our magnetometers so i'll probably send him out a muon detector and it'll give us an idea of what's happening in the strong intense magnetic intensities on our planet and in brazil uh, you know in the weakest you know i really want to uh get this nailed and sorted out so that the equipment is out there and we're getting the data come back because i really really want to know and i bet you guys do is how much of the earth's uh, magnetic intensity in the uh, south atlantic anomaly is affected by amounts of radiation inbound i.e muons as a result of collisions in the upper atmosphere so it's really important that we do get that out there to Brazil. And, uh, you know, I'll be speaking to uh, Jeff in Perth over the coming week. Um, I know I spoke to uh, Richard on the Gold Coast. Got his name right. Uh, for some reason, if you remember, I always used to call him Peter for some reason. But I spoke to Richard over on the Gold Coast. He believes he had coronavirus. and But, you know what, guys, he, he's recovered from it and he's doing well. So well done, Richard. And, uh, you know, stay safe over there. And uh, yeah, by all means, when you get five minutes, drop us over the, uh, your data that you've got over the last month 
and we'll whack it up on the website for people to see. Um, I dare say over the coming weeks we will have uh, data from uh, Arizona. Um, you know, Scott down there will be sending his data over to the UK for us so we can add that to uh, the global Mavstar data. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're continuing. It, it is a bit frustrating here at the observatory at the moment. I'm waiting for parts for, um, you know, the Cloudrow Silver generators. Things have slowed down a little bit. But more frustrating than, than that, guys, is I have ordered three reels of uh, 3D printer filament and not one of them has arrived today. So I've had this 3D printer all set up, ready to go. I've even designed the muon detector case and other things as well uh, for the cloud draw silver generators to make them look a little bit more professional even though they are prototypes uh, as well as other things that we're going to use that for like you know building the cloud chamber um, you know components with uh, but you know what the post has just died on us oh the silver bullion arrived the other day and there was just two thin really really thin pure silver rods in there and what had happened is uh, I'd ordered four foot of silver bullion at 10 gauge and uh, some woman had received my order who had ordered these seven inch by about five gauge wire rods. So uh, there's been a bit of um, you know chasing up by the supplier uh, to get that back out to me but we're still waiting for pumps. We have had the voltage regulators, the book converters come uh, this morning in the post. We've got the uh, reservoirs uh, so we're just waiting for a few more components and we'll get those out to the four people that are waiting at the moment. Um, if you want one, I have over-ordered the parts enough to make another two silver Cloudra generators. If you want one of the Mavstar Observatory uh, Cloudra generators, um, it's £80 plus postage and packaging. Leave it in the PayPal uh, down below in the description if you want one. Um, you know, and we'll get one built for you and we'll send that out. You know, it's just a, a, another little way of us earning a little bit of revenue here at the observatory. We don't make a lot on these, um, you know, cloudrow generators. And uh, if you don't know what the cloudrow generator is for, then do a bit of research. You know, at this time, you know, more than anything, uh, you perhaps might feel uh, it worth having one around. You know, even if it's just to, you know, put as a hand rub on your hands to sanitize them or you know something else you know sterilize your work surfaces with it or as you know you can take it orally um, but you know I, I can't um, you know uh, tell you exactly what it does for legal reasons as you know you know if you don't know what a cloud generator is and you don't know what cloud of silver is then please don't order it you know it's as simple as that do your research you'll find out why me and my wife are drinking it and using it as well and you know if you if you look at how much they cost um you know and how much a bottle 100 mils of cloud or silver costs well you you'll realize very quickly that it'll pay for itself in less than a week um but there you go so guys there's a link down there if you want to sort support our observatory why would you want to do that because we are covering solely one of the largest events that's ever happened in mankind despite covid19 taking place that is just a flea on the dog's back Trust me, by the time it comes around to the magnetic reversal, everyone will be aware of it around the world and it will be equally uh, as just as fascinating. And we're probably only three to seven years away from that really taking place. Can you believe it, guys? For the first time in 780,000 years, we are here with this new anomaly, uh, which we might codename uh, Viper. As I said earlier on in the video, we don't know. Give me an give me your idea. What should we code name the pole shift? Just to refresh it a little bit. You tell me. Put your comments down in the section. And please, if you haven't already, support us. What we're doing here is an observatory, and we don't just talk. We provide solutions. We build equipment. We get it out there globally. We are an observatory at the end of the day. And there's a lot worse things you can do than support a scientific observatory. I'm not going to go on anymore. I'm just going to say, guys, you have a great day. Peace be with you all. I love you all. And as always, bye for now.